Hello, I am Karina. <laughs> and I'm Maddie. And welcome to Everything with the Fairy Tale Sink. Today we're traveling to Russia and diving into the legends of the Rusalka spirits. All right. Well, first of all, how are you? I'm exhausted. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it's like, so, I don't know, I don't know why, but I've had such an inconsistent sleep pattern. Like I've gone to bed at a mm -hmm. set time and then I just like sporadically wake up. And oh yeah, no, I've actually been doing the same. I honestly think it's stress. Also, just cleaner if you see me touching my ears a lot, my headphones just want to keep popping out, so. Oof. Yep. All right, so shall we do recommendation of the day? We shall. Do you have yours or should I go first? No, I actually have mine for once. So yay. my recommendation of, yay. It's like I, so what? my recommendation of the day is the old TV series Saved by the Bell. And my recommendation of the day, because I am an exhausted college student and this has become associated with us, is Squishmallows. They're adorable. They're fun. They're squishy. I love them. Anyways, murder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What a lovely segue. I know, right? So the wilderness is beautiful, but unpredictable. Something yeah, we're just hopping right in. Yes, we are hopping right in. Shut your mouth. The wilderness is beautiful, but unpredictable. Something you see every day on your walk, like a tree or a lake, could have been the death of somebody else mere years ago. This uncertainty of nature is reflected in ancient Slavic folklore by an enchantingly dangerous entity, the Rusalka. I wrote a lot of big words in this because it was late at night and I decided that would be a good idea. I apologize if I stumble over my words. Good job. We see hundreds of variations of the Rusalka, plural Rusalki, so I'll be using those kind of interchangeably, all across the East Slavic region of Europe. Some consistencies, however, are seen. The word Rusalka comes from the same root, which is Rus, as Russia. They've only been known to be female, and they are both revered and feared by the people who believe in them. They love water, and that would be specifically fresh water. You won't see one in seawater. They live in large groups and are handmaidens to Baba Yaga, who I will be covering Sometime, I don't really know when, but she's on the list. <laughs> Eventually. All right, now we're going to kind of dive into the origins. <laughs> dive water. Wow. I'm just I here to be quiet moral support. You're going to be cracking yourself up today. <laughs> well, I really am. Is that right, how it's so going to go? Probably. We'll start with the most peaceful origin story of beautiful, kind nymphs from small river islands in South Russia who enjoy helping fishermen. Then the next possibility is that they are primal, like ancient creatures, so as old as the earth itself. And that is suggested by their connection to both Russia's name and how ancient some of the stories of them are. However, we'll get into kind of some of the confusion around that. In Ukraine specifically, they're water nymphs with the ability to shift into animals or anthropomorphic beings. Those were not specified. They even have connections to other similar spirits, such as the Ieli of Romania, who are nicknamed the Devil's Daughters for their penchant for possession. That was pretty good. Neat. Neat. All right, slight content warning here for talks of violence. It'll be short, but letting you know. All right, the Rusalki are considered by many to be the ghosts of girls who died in or near the water, perhaps by suicide or accidental drowning. Most commonly, however, is murder in incredibly violent ways, such as being drowned. These victims are unable to move on until their murderer has died. And now, my least favorite, ghost kids! Yes! Specifically babies. No, 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 ghost babies. What? Okay, ghost children are scary. I don't like them. Anytime I hear ghost, ch like ghost children <laughs> laughter, the thought of it just makes me disgusted. <laughs> Babies, like, can you imagine you're walking through the woods and you just hear a baby crying? Like, no, thank you. No. These legends suggest that they were babies that were drowned by their mothers after being born out of wedlock. They may have also been babies that died before being baptized, but we're going to go more into the Christian influences at the end of the episode. These babies wandered the riverbanks looking for some sort of peace, but they're, they have been known for babies. Like, babies. Okay, yeah, no, no, actually. No, they turn into this female form okay. after they die. Or at least that's what I think. Okay, so it's not just some ghost toddler wandering the banks of a river. I don't think so. Okay. But there is a connection to babies for okay. some reason. 
Okay, so and they so, have a yeah. shift or in my mind, I, I just so. want to picture a small child just on mm. the yeah, um, so they're basically, they're looking for some sort of peace. In the Christian version, it's said that they're looking for somebody to baptize them. Um, they have been known to get violent, though. And my note here is icky, I hate it, no more ghost kids. For the viewers, yeah. I wrote this very late at, light, at night last night, so this might get weird. So, we have a quote now. Um, I won't be naming my professor, but I, I mean, I didn't get his consent to name him, so we'll keep him private. But I am taking Russian at my college right now, and my professor is from Siberia and teaches Russian culture classes as well as language courses. So he's pretty well versed in this stuff. And so this was his insight after I emailed him. Quote, the Rusalka is an ancient East Slavic pre-Christian belief in water spirits from the wild forest who need to be coaxed into the spring fields. There were ceremonies to do this. The Rusalka is capricious, like the spring rains, and can lure men to their deaths in the water, sometimes involving tickling them. No comment. We'll get back to that. We will get back to that. You don't get to say anything yet. So later, Westerners likened the Rusalka to the mermaid, but Rusalka were originally not connected with seawater at all, and they originally had normal female bodies rather than fishtails. We'll unpack all of that, but first, yes, he meant tickling. I double-checked, and he explained that... They would, in fact, tickle men to death. That is horrifying. Genuinely <laughs> horrifying. Because I hate when people tickle me. Like, you try Same. and tickle me, and I just... But if you are tickled to death, like, you cannot physically move while someone is tickling you, sounds, <laughs> like, a, sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, so he did explain that um, laughter is considered to be a powerful transformative force in many like Indo-European rituals, and it can even be lethal. So anyways, thank you to my professor. I don't know if he's going to see this, but thank you to my professor for giving me that insight. It's a really good transition into what we're going to talk about. And I'm yeah, now we're going to tickling. Yeah. But let's I, continue. I double checked even. It was not a typo. He meant it. Um, anyways, continuing. So talking about the lethality of the tickling, it's a perfect transition into talking about how, how and why they hunt. And that would be specifically humans. So the Rusalki are trickster spirits and shapeshifters. They can be beautiful, usually naked maidens, or they can With be- fish tails. No, actually, they usually don't have fish tails. I was gonna say, you never address the fish tails. Yes, I did. You just said they had my, my professor said they originally had normal female bodies rather than fishtails. Okay. I'm just down and wasn't, I was like paying attention, but not half, you know? It's usually argued like what they could look like, but they didn't start having fishtails until the Western influence of the mermaid came by. Yeah, I was going to say, because mermaids are always pictured man or woman, usually pretty, pretty on top and a fishtail on the bottom, but these creatures sound quite different and have just been westernized. Yes, so they will usually be just a female body, usually naked, or they can be, and I quote from my script, bloated corpse zombie drowned things. This is like the Kelpies all over again. You have the beautiful maidens. It's very similar. You have the beautiful maidens, and then you have the evil Danny DeVitos. No, this you don't have Danny DeVitos. You just have, you know, those like CPR dummies. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, you know what's worse is the dentist dummies. Have you ever seen dentistry dummies? Oh my god, I hate them. <laughs> so instead, you, you either have beautiful naked women or dentistry dummies that are bloated. Oh <laughs> and like with zombie paint on them. Yep. Yep. All right. A very important fact about the Rusalka is that they love to dance. That's in like every single story about them, no matter what. This dance is actually a really, really good thing as it's it supports fertility of the land. You just don't want to see it. <laughs> um, so any human that lays eyes on the dance will be hunted and drowned by the Rusalki. They'll use the dance combined with a singing that is supposed to be enchanting to draw in unsuspecting humans, usually young men, that's their favorite prey. As their laugh, oh, of course, their laugh can also kill a man. And they also like to swing and play in the trees, which provides them another hiding spot. What do you think of that? It's interesting. It's always, I don't know. I feel like it's, you know, you have these beautiful creatures and they always 
drown the men mm -hmm. to keep them company. I don't know. The dancing is interesting because dancing is obviously so cultural for so many different mm -hmm. cultures. And yeah. so the fact that, you know, I mean, we did very cultural dancing for years and mm -hmm. years and years. So, yeah. I think it's really interesting, though. Like, we see this juxtaposition a lot with the Rizalka is that they are really, really good. You just don't want to make them mad. Mm -hmm. But no, if you have them, they will bless the lands, they'll bless the harvest. You're good to go, which is why also in the quote from my professor, he brought up, you want to get them to come and bless your harvest. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he you don't want to see spring rains. Yes, you know, they're very similar to rains. rains. Mm -hmm. And I also like that they swing from trees. I don't know, yes. that detail kind of makes me happy. So <laughs> now, theoretically, if you were a young man who's now scared of riverbanks, you may be wondering how to avoid them. Don't oh, go I got really, really, I got really salty last night. Well, first of all, don't go up to a bunch of beautiful naked women dancing under the moon on the banks of a forest river. Best case I mean, scenario. I mean, it's like that little that little ditty. There's a place in France, although this is Russia. You know, there's a place in France where the naked ladies dance. Yeah. No, I'm just gonna say as a disclaimer. As somebody who has like family friends who celebrate like um what's it called summer solstice mm -hmm. if you see a bunch of naked people in the forest just don't. leave them be take a shot every time i'm kidding don't take <laughs> shots but um take a shot of water every time we say naked oh my god all right so best case scenario if you go up to these naked women they're in their element and you're just going to be a nuisance worst case scenario they want to drown you and steal your soul cool so just don't do it however if you do come across a risaka in the day or one solo at night there are some ways to know first of all her I'm eyes naked. are not i mean a normal lady nudists exist however um her eyes may not have pupils okay which is a little telling um and then secondly look at her hair which this is another similarity similarity to the kelpie it's very similar to a kelpie's tail her hair must always be wet enough to drip or she will die however she has a magical comb with her i don't know where she stores it but she does have a magical comb with her that can produce water in a pinch and she can comb it through her hair and it's she'll be good to go hair, like she twists it up and sticks the comb in but every source i'm Red, I didn't put it this in the script because I didn't think it was important, but I'm gonna bring it up now. The Rusalka are also like you can see them because their hair is always unbound, especially mm -hmm. in Russian culture. That's really weird. Like young girls would always wear their hair in braids, and then older women would wear their hair up like hidden. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really weird to see these women in like with their hair unbound. So it's not in their hair. I don't know where they put it. I don't really want to know where they put it. That's their business. They carry fanny packs. Anyways. I just so. have one of those, um, the hairy stomach fanny packs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't like you. We're moving on. Hey. I'm just going to not look at the camera for a little bit. It will help. All right. I'm going to take a... <laughs> Back to the magic comb. No, no, we're actually moving on from the magic comb now. Okay, thank God. I, Me too. So, I mentioned before that there are no male Rusalka. There are some male water spirits, how, water spirits, however, that the Rusalki are commonly associated with and even will be married to, called the Voidyanoi. They are generally considered to be the ghosts of men who died of suicide or before last rites. It's yeah. kind of like how there's no female, no, no male Kikimora, but there are the male mm -hmm. equivalent of Kikimora. Yeah. Um, so the Voidinoi are known to drown any swimmer who angers them by being rude, or even for keeping humans as slaves. And they are hideous. They have long, green, slimy beards, and are both scaly and hairy at the same time. Ew. Yeah. So, with these delightful husbands, the Rusalka live underwater, sometimes in sunken shipwreck, sometimes in sunken ship wreckage, or sometimes in underwater palaces, which were not elaborated on, but sound lovely. 
And in the summer, the Rusalki move to live in the trees and then year round, I believe, they guard Baba Yaga's rye fields. So they have like a migration cycle then. Yeah. Which I think is also a really interesting thing between them and like mermaids is mm-hmm. in the winter when it's cold, they live underwater. And then when it gets warm, they're like, freedom, freedom to go live in the trees. Right. I don't know if their husbands follow. All right, so the Rusalka are represented by many things. Elementally, they're associated with water, clearly. The color white is also considered to be theirs. And I will mention that there are some versions of the Rusalka that wear white linen shifts with no belt because belts are supposed to be a symbol of like society in a lot of Slavic regions, which I found to be really interesting. But yeah, that's a big distinction is they won't wear belts, so wear white linen shifts. So um, they don't wear belts and they don't have their hair up. So they're very yes. against what is common. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they're associated also with the wolf, though I'm not entirely sure why. The birch tree and poppy, rye, and flax. And in the spring, Russian women weave and embroider cloths, and then they will drape them over the limbs of a birch tree. These are gifts to the Rusalka to appease them and to encourage them to continue blessing the harvest. To present offerings to the Rusalka, if you're interested, it's recommended you build a temporary altar in the forest by the water. If you can't do that, at least make sure it's outside. They do not like inside altars. Um, And if you're wondering what to give them, they like ribbons, flower garlands, embroidered cloths, and tea towels. I like all of those things as well. Maybe I'm just <laughs> <wearing yourself. laughs> I say as my hair is up. I'm and not wearing a belt though. And you're wearing clothing. True. I am wearing clothing. All right. So now we're going to talk about, you know, the big event that messes with a lot of these things. Christianity. Christianity in these Slavic regions changed everything. We have talked really briefly about how many of the ancient stories were tragically lost and forgotten. However, some legends like the Rusalka morphed into creatures of Christian mythos. The Christian origin suggests that the Rusalki are girls who A, died before being baptized, or B, still followed the pagan ways. Which I think is a little funny because they're a pagan creature, but you know what? Do what you gotta do. (laughs) These stories were used to encourage or even threaten girls into being baptized. They have become associated with the holiday of Pentecost, which falls in late spring, and they are rumored to enjoy the festivities that come with that holiday. They are also, coincidentally, at their most lethal during this week, like surrounding that Sunday. Take that as you will. And here we are at the end. So what did you think, Maddie? Honestly, I don't think they're that bad. You know, they sound pretty no. harmless unless you interrogate them. They don't, inter- you know. Mm-hmm. They don't bug you unless you bug them first. So just leave them alone, you know? Yeah. I think it's really interesting. Like, I actually like the most common myth of them, which is that they're murder victims who just have to exist until their murderer moves on. Mm -hmm. Because the whole concept of the Rusalka is freedom, in my Mm -hmm. opinion. Like, I think they've been really villainized by the Christian church because they are that pagan creature. Um, Mm -hmm. No shade to Christianity. I'm just saying, like, well, the fact that, yeah. I mean, the fact that they go against society in that freedom, mm-hmm. sense, they don't have their hair up, like we mentioned, they don't have the belts, they more often than not are naked, you know, that's mm-hmm. against all the societal norms, and mm-hmm. they're living a very free, nice life, they dance, they get to swim, they get to, you know, bless your harvest and your crops, mm-hmm. and they are generally a good thing, you just don't bug them. You don't don't bug them. Don't poke a bear with a stick. Don't poke a Rusalka yeah. with a stick. Same thing. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm glad we're on the same page with that. Maybe it's just like the idea of like kind of loving that story of a free female spirit. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Just something about this one makes it's me happy. Interesting, even though now, it's interesting. Now we're getting more into these episodes. Like we've had a few in the past and we're obviously continuing we're starting to see a lot of similarities in the creatures from different, yeah. you know, different cultures, because like we mentioned in this episode, they're very similar to Kelpies and Kikimora. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those are, well, Kikimora are also Kikimora Scottish. Kikimora is from the same thing, but the Kelpies yeah. are, are Scottish. Not. Kelpies are Scottish. 
but mm-hmm. all the fact that they're similar and they're not similar because oh they're just water spirits they're similar because they have a lot of like cultural similarities in the sense that you know mm-hmm. And also, like, if we look back at, like, anthropology, what we know about the time before written history, um, there was a time where the Celts and the Vikings and the Slavs and all of that lived sort of together. So that's Mm -hmm. why a lot of those mythologies are very similar is because Mm -hmm. they come from the same very ancient mythos. Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting when you see this because, like, you can see those similarities and how they're both shapeshifters and they're both water spirits, but there are a lot of differences between them. One, I mean, mostly is animal. One is mostly beautiful woman. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's really interesting looking kind of more into like the anthropology side of it. And thank you for joining us. And we always get so in depth at the end. We should do wishes of the day before we forget. Yes, no, I know. But I always say like, thank you yeah, know, thank no, you in do. the sense that thank you for listening to our very yes. in-depth discussions, which I almost always leave in the videos because they're super interesting. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, <clears throat> these are not Excuse planned me. at all. We just really enjoy sometimes going into it. Because so, yeah. those of you who I'm, I mean, I'm sure most of the viewers know us as people outside of this. We like mm-hmm. to talk. We and do. we both we both like to get very in depth with things, and so this mm-hmm. is a great way for us to do it. But anyways, what's your wish? My wish is that the next time you're cleaning your room, we're getting up to finals week, so you're finally getting to spring break, and you're like, man, I just need to spring clean. You will find your favorite trinket from childhood, and then you will be able to hold on to it for as long as you want to. Nice. My wish kind of goes along with finals week is that when you're studying and then you eventually go to take your final, your brain doesn't just go on the on the questions. <laughs> yeah, your brain just, you have the answer and it comes to you when you need it and it's just, it's there for you. That's my mm-hmm. wish. So Maddie, what's coming up next? Next week, we are talking about the, well, I mean, obviously there's a ton of Native American legends out there. And so I will be talking specifically about the Wendigo yeah anyways thank you so much for joining us for this episode um let us know your thoughts down in the comments we really would like to start getting some conversations going down there um thank you for listening and any last words maddie yes thank you again thank you for watching go give us a follow on instagram if you're not like and subscribe this video and we will start utilizing the community page on youtube a little bit more i think by the time this video goes up our website will be up and running um we have a tiktok now which isn't super active yet however we'll be using it more as finals go by Mm -hmm. and yeah anyways thank you bye